Dr. Engelbrecht, good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for your time. I mean, looking ahead at this year from a climate change perspective, I mean, what should we be mindful of? I mean, just coming out of that uh, COP26 in Glasgow towards the end of last year, uh, what should we be looking uh, forward to, if anything at all? Good afternoon, Dan. Thank you very much for the invitation. Well, let me just start by briefly referring to what you to what we've mentioned in the introduction. Um, this current excessive rainfall we are increasingly now experiencing in the summer rainfall region, that's of course attrib attributed to a La Nina event. Um, the Pacific Ocean is cooler than normal, and usually during such years we have above normal rainfall and all too often also flooding in South Africa. So I think the immediate question is, of course, for how long will the effects of the La Nina event last in South Africa? Um, will we perhaps see another tropical low or cyclone reaching Mozambique this season that is still on the cards for this season? Um, and the, the good news is, is that seasonal outlooks for our region are becoming less optimistic in terms of rainfall. February and March of this year is possibly going to be not as wet. And there's not so much confidence in that statement, but it's not clear that February and March will be so wet. And I think for many South Africans at this point in time, it will be good news. Um, but looking deep into the year, of course, this year we are going to have the 27th Conference of the Parties. And I think many viewers will probably be under the impression, and quite correctly so, that COP26 was not a success. It was not a success um, in the sense that it didn't get the nations of the world so far to commit global warming to below 1.5 degrees Celsius. In fact, not even below 2 degrees Celsius. Um, COP27 is to tie up some of the loose strings of COP26. Will we see more ambitious commitments being made by specifically some of the world's biggest emitters, maybe a statement by, from the US um, being more ambitious in terms of phasing out coal, maybe in the 2030s. Um, that, that collaboration that has, been, that has formed between the USA and China, um, no details are really known about it at this point in time. That's now a collaboration on climate change matters. Will it lead to a more ambitious joint commitment made by China and the USA in terms of slowing down global warming, um, maybe towards COP26. That's, that's the best thing I think we can hope for this year mm, mm. in terms of, of the climate mitigation effort of the nations of the world. But now, just at the level of just being practical and close at home, you've mentioned the word cyclone. You've said we don't know. We saw Cyclone die a couple of years ago, almost destroying Mozambique's second largest city of Beira and uh, running right across to the eastern side of South Africa and dumping a lot of rain all the way to Botswana. We are in the cyclone season now. Can we expect one or two very intense and extreme uh, cyclones this year? That was March 2019, of course. Um, intense tropical cyclone made landfall almost directly over Beira. Um, more than a thousand people died in the path of that storm. It was the biggest flood disaster we've ever recorded in Africa, south of the equator. Now, under climate change futures, in, in a warmer future world, the science is very clear that these types of tropical cyclones will, um, will occur more frequently across the planet and also in the part of the ocean that influences us, the so-called Southwest Indian Ocean Basin. So it is clear that the risk of these types of storms occurring and making landfall in Southern Africa is increasing as long as the world is warming. But can such a cyclone move as far south as, say, Maputo or so, uh, even Richards Bay in South Africa. Now, climate science tells us that as the ocean is warming, the likelihood for such an event is increasing. The, the risk of such an event occurring in the next 20 years is greater than it was over the last 20 years. Mm. What about the specific season? I think that's what you're asking. Well, unfortunately, 
the weather forecasts are not so clear that they can provide us with that type of detail through till the end of April. That's basically for as long as the tropical cyclone uh, season lasts. But I do see in medium range weather prediction outlooks that conditions are favorable for tropical cyclone landfall over northern Mozambique, um, maybe over the next two weeks or so. That we can say. So it is something we need to monitor very closely over the next two weeks. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting what happens. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Francois Engelbrecht, Director of the Global Change Institute. We're just uh, focusing a little bit what would be the big ticket items climate change-wise in 2022 and kind of extreme weather conditions that might happen because of climate change. We are currently under the La Nina effect, hence a lot of wetness currently. But he says it might not go beyond February. We'll have to wait and see.